Okay, I'm going to have a look at uh, rest mass and relativistic momentum. Now this is from the textbook, chapter 10.2, page 280. You'll notice the term rest mass. Now that would imply that's the mass of an object as measured by someone who's moving, who's not moving relative to the object. So for instance, in your laboratory, if you measured the mass of something on your <coughs> electronic balance, you'd be measuring the rest mass because you're at rest with respect to that mass. So rest mass must have the symbol m0. The trouble is there's no such thing as relativistic mass. Now you think well if there's rest mass why talk about rest mass if mass doesn't change um, when the observer is moving relative to the mass. Now this is a bit of a tricky one. There's a lot of textbooks around <coughs> um, overseas textbooks um, some in Australia that do a conversion that says when mass is moved at a higher speed an observer who's witnessing that move will measure a higher mass than the rest mass and the person who's traveling along with the mass would measure the same old mass it doesn't change the rest mass but Einstein said there's no such thing as relativistic mass and he lamented the fact that people were talking about relativistic mass. Now, mass is not relativistic mass is not something in the syllabus. They use the term rest mass, but there is no change in mass when uh, it moves at a higher speed. So forget about anything to do with relativistic m mass. As far as you're concerned, in the syllabus, it doesn't happen. Um, and I've mentioned that in the textbook. I said Einstein you know, wept at the idea that people were talking about relativistic mass. So there is only one mass, and that's rest mass. And that's the mass you measure in the laboratory when you're at rest to it, or if you could somehow measure the mass as it's moving, uh, you'd still get the same value. Now, <coughs> the only thing the syllabus talks about <coughs> is relativistic momentum. Now, all you have to be able to do is do calculations on relativistic momentum. Now all it is is a simple formula. Um, it's very much like the same formulas as you've had before and we'll just try one out. Now the old, you know very well that P equals MV. That's the old Newtonian formula you've been using all through um, probably since grade 10, grade 11 and so on. So this we could call Newtonian. So Newtonian momentum is just MV. Now we might as well stick a zero in there because it's the same thing. So that's Newtonian. The other word for it you'll often see is classical. So classical momentum and Newtonian momentum are just P equals MV. Now <coughs> the relativistic momentum is P and it's got a subscript V. Now we're never quite sure why they've chosen V as the subscript. The syllabus uses it and we'll stick to it. Now I've never been able to find out why it's V, um, but it's just V. Um, I would imagine it means that the momentum traveling at a high velocity, uh, relativistic velocity. Um, now that's just equal to M0V, which is just your ordinary Newtonian momentum divided by, now you can almost guess what this is going to be, 1 minus v squared on c squared. So there's the two formulas. Um, we can do a simple calculation. Let's say for instance um, I talked about, um, let's say 1 kilogram to keep it nice and simple at traveling at 0.8 c. Okay, so let's compare the relativistic momentum with the Newtonian momentum. Now, often you get questions like that. Um, what's the ratio of the two? Well, the simplest way is to basically, you know, the safest way is to work out each of them. So let's try this. It's just one kilogram times V, which is 0 0.8 times 3 by 10 to the 8. Now, that's 2.4 by 10 to the 8. Now the units for momentum, that's kilograms, meter seconds to the negative 1. So it's kilograms 
meter second to the negative one. So that's the Newtonian or classical momentum of a one kilogram object traveling at 0.8 C. Now let's now try and see what we get for this. Now I'll just cut a few corners here. M0V, well we've already done that, M0V. We know it's 2.4 by 10 to the 8 divided by this thing here. Now that's 1 minus V squared is 0.8. Now remember I said when it's in units of C you can leave out the C squared there and just make it 0 0.8 squared. Now that comes down to 2.4 by 10 to the 8 divided by um, now this is 0.8 squared that's 0.64 1 minus 0.64 is 0.36. The square root of that is 0.6. So that comes down to 0.6. And if you work that out, um, that comes to 4 by 10 to the 8. Now it's the same units, kilograms, meter second to the negative 1. Okay, so what we've got <coughs> are the Newtonian momentum there and the relativistic momentum there. Now typically the question would say what's the ratio of the relativistic momentum P over the Newtonian P and so that would be 4 by 10 to the 8 over 2.4 by 10 to the 8 and whatever that comes to, the 10 to the 8's cancel out. That's um, 6, one's a 6. That comes to about that, something like that. Okay, if you divide that through, that doesn't look right. 1.6, I think that'd be. That's better. Okay, so it's about 1.67 times greater when it's relativistic. Okay, um, <coughs> That's all there is to that really. Now instead of looking at one kilogram objects you might you're probably more likely to look at um, electrons or protons because elect not, there's not a lot of stuff that can travel that of mass one kilogram that could travel at that speed. It's more likely to be um, an electron or a proton or something like that. So you have the mass of an electron which would be, you know, something by 1.6 by 10 to the negative 34 kilograms times that. And you're probably looking at 0.9 C or something like that in, in the Large Hadron Collider, or something like that. And you could do the same calculations. Now, just to finish this off, I'll just rub this off for a minute. Um, get rid of all of this. I just want to show you one other thing um, <coughs> with momentum. Now, if you, if you look at a graph, and this is the speed going from 0 to 1.0, this is in units of C. So 0C, in other words, at rest, up to 1C. Now, you know, that's, that's traveling the speed of light. And if you look at the momentum here, now you can look at either the Newtonian momentum or the classical momentum. Now if you look at say a one kilogram object and you so that's point one is about here. But if you if you look at the difference, what you'll find is this. You'll find for the Newtonian momentum it's something like that. So this is P Newtonian. Okay, if you do those calculations, now you can set this up on an Excel spreadsheet, and that's all I did for the textbook. Now I've got this graph in the textbook, it's about page 281, or no, it's a little bit further on, 283 I think. Um, <coughs> I just did this on Excel, and it's lovely to see the shape of the two. But what happens is, at low speeds, under point 0.1, so that's non-relativistic speeds, they're much the same. Now this is in kilograms meter second to the minus one. 
and let's say it's by 10 to the 8 or something it doesn't really matter what the scale is but what you find it starts to move away I can't draw this very straight and then it shoots up like this at at 1c okay and in fact it never actually reaches there it would touch that at infinity in other words it just keeps on going so in other words <coughs> Uh, when the speeds are low, there's not much difference between the Newtonian and this is the P relativistic. Okay, now when you're doing these questions, you could use a symbol like REL or you could use a little V. Here, I'd just put P Newtonian or P classical, whatever you like, um, as a subscript. So, um, the relativistic momentum really shoots off once you're getting up to you know 0 0.8 0 0.9 when you get up to 0 0.99 C you know you're way way off the scale and if you ever got to 1 C it'd be infinity so an object with traveling that's an object with mass not light light doesn't the um, photons don't have mass but a object say an electron or something like that traveling at 1 C would have an infinite amount of momentum now an infinite amount, of, infinite amount of momentum is impossible. You'd need an infinite force to actually speed the electron up. So you'd need more energy there than there is in the entire universe to get it there. So you'd never do it. So this is the ultimate speed. You can't go past that point there. That's the limiting, limiting speed of the universe. I'd say limiting speed or ultimate. So the limiting speed of the universe or the ultimate speed of the universe is 1c. Okay, so, um, And to get there, this particle would have to have infinite amount of momentum. And it, you can't. It's impossible. So that's why they can talk about nothing going faster than the speed of light. Okay. Um, I've got to come back and do a little bit about energy and the conversion of mass into energy. Now you're familiar with that formula which is E equals mc squared or in the way we're doing it in the syllabus delta E that's the change in energy equals um, the change in mass delta m times c squared. Now you've done those calculations earlier on in chapter 6 I think it was in the unit 1 and 2 but I'll just do one separately um, just talk about a few little odds and ends about it. Um, if you're going to get a question on momentum I would tend to think you'd get a question where you compare Newtonian and a relativistic momentum work out the ratio or something like that um, a simple one would be just to calculate the relativistic momentum of an object traveling at a certain speed um, some good questions are uh, at what speed is the relativistic momentum twice the Newtonian or three times and you can just set up your equations um, and it's pretty simple. Now I've got a few of those in the textbook and you can have a go at those. Um, I might leave that there. There's not a lot more to do. The key point is rest mass is M0. It doesn't change. And relativistic momentum gives you the ultimate speed of the universe um, because you'd need, ult uh, you'd need infinite momentum to get to that speed and it can't happen. That's with an object with mass. An object without mass, such as a photon, um, is no problem because it travels at the speed of light. And that's it. We'll leave it there. Thank you.